Group by pivot by are also new functions that have just relied to Excel that kind of replace pivot tables. And I'm going to show you in this video how to use them with charts to make kind of like pivot charts, and even how to use them with slices like that. As well as using charts that the regular Excel doesn't let you, like map charts or these kind of sunburst charts. If you want a copy of this workbook to follow along, you can download it, link in the description below. Let's get started. So I'm going to do equals group by, and I'm first going to select the row fields. The three inputs are mandatory rows values. I'm going to do kids, and then I'm going to do comma and sum. I'm just going to double click that one. But if you want to do charts, then you should do the next two. Otherwise, it doesn't really work. So I need my headers and totals don't work for charts. So I'm going to do field headers to be yes and show. That's almost always the one that I use. And then total depth, I'm going to choose no totals like that. So this is my data. And now I can go to insert and I'm going to do a column chart. And there we go. This is how we want it. Usually you want your charts to be sorted uh, unless there's a clear reason not to. So I'm going to do sort order to be minus two which will mean the second column in my output, which is the kids column. And I'm going to sort it from highest to lowest in descending order like this. If you wanted to do ascending order, you would do plus two. I have a bunch of other videos about group by pivot by, but this one is just going to focus on the charts. Now my defaults with charts are usually format data series, and I'm going to choose 50%. This is in line with modern design trends to have thicker bars. I don't always like the grid lines, so I'm going to delete those, delete these numbers. And I'm also going to add data labels. This is usually how I do charts like this. All right. So because we've got data by countries, we can also do this as a map chart. So if I select the same data, I can go to insert and I can choose maps and choose this one. And this is essentially a map chart of my data. So let me move this to the side. And the one thing I always recommend with map charts is right click and choose format data series. And in map area, I'm going to choose only regions with data like that. Sometimes you want to keep all of them, but usually with countries, I find this is more intuitive and map labels. I'm going to choose show all it lies. It doesn't show them all clearly unless you make it bigger, but. Uh, I find this much more useful than not having them. Now, to show you what would happen if I tried this with a pivot table, I'd run into all sorts of issues. So insert pivot table, and I'm going to choose the area is a new worksheet over here, and I'm going to choose country and kids. So same data, same results here. And now if I want to do this as a map chart, if I go to insert and choose a map chart, this will tell me I can't create this type of chart inside a pivot table, but I can with group by. Now I can create a 2D column chart in the same way. I can also sort it directly from within the chart from largest to smallest, for example. And then I have more clutter to get rid of. So I have to delete and remove these, etc. remove the total, which comes by default, but I can do that. Now here's another thing that I love about group by pivot by that pivot tables doesn't do which is that you don't have to refresh manually. So here I have a couple of charts that come from this above one, and this is a chart that comes from the pivot table. Let's make this smaller just so we can see. I know it's a particularly ugly chart, but let me change this last entry from Belgium to be Spain. Note that it is the only Belgium in the list. So if I remove it, then I should see Belgium remove in my tables and also in my charts. So I'm going to press enter to switch this to Spain. And look at that. It's removed it from there. It's removed it from this chart, but it hasn't removed it from the pivot table or the pivot chart. What I need to do is right click and refresh manually. And now it has done that and removed that. So this is why I love doing charts using group by pivot by. They do update automatically and they can do other things as well. Now let's try a hierarchical chart. So I'm going to add gender into rows in my pivot table. And if I go to insert and I try and choose these newer charts, which are the tree map or the sunburst, it wouldn't let me. But if I do it with group by, I can actually do it. So let's do it. Let's make some space here and let's write this formula. So here I'm going to do equals group by and I'm going to choose my row fields. I'm going to choose these two columns. 
you can actually do that. If you want non-consecutive columns, I have another video where I show all the different ways you can do that. Definitely worth a watch if you are using this a lot. And then for a function, I'm going to choose a sum. Now I'm going to close my brackets and I get it like this, but let's do the same default, which is yes and show number three, and then comma, and then we're gonna do no totals. And now I can select my data and I can now go to insert a tree map or a sunburst like this. There we go. I personally don't love using these charts, but they are ones that exist. So you should be able to get them with Excel. Again, let's say that I try a new field that's going to make the, the table expand and also give me more options in this one. So let's do uh, postgrad as another union level. And there you go. It's going to put it in there. Where I'm going to put other in gender. And now it's going to do another level here. Perfect. Also works with a tree map. Insert this one and then tree map. Again, I don't use this so often, but I know that some people like to use them. You cannot do these with pivot tables. With a hierarchy, you can also go to insert and just choose a kind of column or bar chart. And this will work as well. It will kind of group them together and then do the subdividing. Or you can also choose a box and whisker chart. You actually can do this just with one category if you want to, but I really like these box and whisker charts. That will show you the spread, which will be the X is the mean and the upper and lower quartiles. I don't have that much data. That's why it's showing me like this. I would usually do this without aggregating it first, but they are available as are the histogram too. And the last one that is also not available in Excel, well, waterfall and funnel. So these two aren't available in pivot tables. They're essentially the charts that, that got released after 2015 that are not available with pivot tables, but they are with group by pivot by. All right, let's go to the next level and look at how to use these with slices. Now for this, we are actually going to use a pivot table as a workaround. So I'm going to select this data. I'm going to go to insert pivot table, and I'm actually going to do this in a new worksheet and it's going to, to not clutter what we need. I'm going to then paste so it's next in my values. And then I'm going to do just edu for education. I'm also going to right click on edu. I'm going to choose add a slicer. And then this slicer is going to just show me what is in the pivot table. So it's just a single value, but I'm going to cut and paste this back into my other one and control V to paste that. So now it's not affecting anything yet, but I can use the filter input inside this group by to allow that to work. So after sort order, I have a comma and I can do filter array and I'm going to do this edu column, and I'm going to say equal to, I'm going to go back to where my pivot table is and click on that. And now it is only showing me based on that value. And if I click on the different options, then the charts, as you can see, are all changing. So the last thing I'll do is pivot by to get essentially two dimensions on a chart. So here you can do equals pivot by, and you have row fields and column fields and then values and then functions. So I'm going to choose first country and then I'm going to choose gender and then I'm going to choose age. And for age, we're going to do average. No point in having a sum of age. That doesn't make sense. So I'm going to close my brackets there and have this one. And I'm not going to change anything with the totals or the headers. So if I do insert and I choose this kind of a 2D column chart, there you go. It'll do a two-dimensional one. And totals are okay when you're doing averages uh, because they're not just going to be obscenely much higher than everything else. But yeah, this is how you can do it. If you want to go a little bit further, you can, I'll just, just show you what would happen if I did the yes and show for totals. It just wouldn't work for the chart. And even for the table, it gives me three rows of, to of headers, which is not what I need. So I'm going to leave that blank. If I do zero, for no totals in the row, it'll look like that. And then you have other options for no totals in columns as well. I find it's a little bit buggy when it gets to the chart representation of it. And this could also feed through to the filters if I keep pressing the comma along. And then filter array, I'm going to choose uh, where this one 
is equal to this cell. Now it is going to be dependent on the slicer as well. You can choose your sort options as well if that's what you want to do. All right. And then if you want to make this into a dashboard, you could just copy and paste and rearrange just like you do in other dashboards. There are limitations with you can't use the timeline in the same way. And as I said, slicers don't work if you have multiple selections or if you have multiple slicers connected to the same group by. For both of those instances, you need more advanced formulas, which I'm not going to cover in this video. But I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David Bonham, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. So if you're using Tech of the Workplace, then check it out on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff like Group by Pivot by. Thanks for watching.